our video for today, we will try to solve a problem involving HL stresses wherein our connecting rods are subjected to different forces. Now, let's first read our problem. We have an aluminum rod that is rigidly attached between a steel rod and a bronze rod and then HL loads are applied at the positions indicated. Now I will show that later. And then in our problem, we have to find the maximum value of P that will not exceed a stress in steel of 100 MPa, in aluminum of 80 MPa, or in bronze of 90 MPa. Now these stresses are called the allowable stresses. What this means is that if our member will be subjected to a stress higher than these values, then it will have a tendency to fail and so that's why we can't exceed that value and then our cross-sectional areas are also given we have 500 mm squared for steel 400 mm squared for aluminum and then we have 200 mm squared for bronze and so these are our cross-sectional areas and so let's actually try to see how our figure will look like so first our member is attached to this support and then we have our steel member and then between the steel rod and the bronze rod, we have the aluminum rod. And so it will be right here. This is our aluminum rod. And then finally, we have our bronze rod, which is subjected to the following loads. And so this will be our configuration. Now, if we want to manually solve this problem, we can cut each member segment by segment so that we will be able to see the reactive internal force in our rods. That force will be what we will consider in our calculations for the stresses. Take note that in making cuts, we will consider each member but we cannot cut at their junction point or the point where the members meet. Instead, our cutting plane will be anywhere along the member but just right before where it ends. What this means is we can actually cut here or here or even here but not right here because this is the junction point of the steel rod and the aluminum rod. Now, the cuts that I made earlier is for the steel rod. How about if we will consider the aluminum rod? Our cut can be right here or here but not here because this is also a junction point. Now this is what you have to remember. And so since we have made this clear, we will now first consider the steel member which is this one. And so making our cut, we have this one. And then we will try to draw our internal forces. And so if we will make this cut, we can actually divide this figure into two. And so we will have this one. This part right here, this is our cut section. And then let's remember that when we make a cut, then that section should also be in equilibrium. And so to maintain equilibrium at this portion, we should have a reaction force here. And then let's just always assume that all reactive internal forces are in tension. In this way, when the answer is positive, it means that we have the correct assumption and that the member is actually in tension. And then if our answer will be negative, it means that we have a compressive force and thus a compressive stress. And then take note that whether you will solve the force in the member considering the left part of the section or the right part, you should get the same value. And so this is how you can check. And so to maintain equilibrium in this section, we should have a reactive force here, which is our internal force. And then again, we will first assume that our internal force is in tension. And so that's why I am writing this away from the body. However, we all know that the direction of this force will actually go to the left in order to resist this force. However, we will just be assuming that it is in tension and then if our answer is negative, then that means that that member is in compression. Now this is P steel because this is the actual force in our steel member. Now sir, how are we going to solve this one? We can solve this load by summing up forces horizontal. And so we have summation of forces along x, that should be equal to 0. And then we have two forces going to the right. And so we have 5p plus p steel, that's equal to 0. And so moving this one to the right, we will actually change the sign. And so our p steel will be negative 5p. And so this is the force that we will consider in our calculations. And so let's try to solve the value of p considering the steel section. So we have, again, our governing formula will be stress is equal to force over area. And then our allowable stress for the steel member is 100 MPa. And so we have 100 Newton per millimeter squared. And then this is equal to force divided by the area. And then the force that we will use is this force, which is minus 5p. However, we will just be taking the absolute value of this one because if you will actually take the negative sign, then the value of our area will also be negative. However, there's no negative area. And so let's just consider the absolute value. However, let's just indicate that it's in compression because again, if our result in the internal force is negative, then our member is in compression. And then if it's positive, then our member is in tension. And then it will be subjected to a tensile stress. 
And so let's continue. We have 5P divided by the area, which is for steel, we have 500 millimeters squared. So 500 mm squared. And so mm squared will cancel. And then we are left with newtons. And so solving that one, we have 100 is equal to 5X divided by 500. And so our value of P will be 10,000 newtons. So for bronze, our P will be 10,000 newtons. And so we will just recall this one later. Now sir, what did you mean earlier that we can actually consider the section to the right? What I meant was, you can sum up forces along X for this section, and then you should get the same value which is and so let's try to do that. So we have, considering our section to the right, let me just erase this one. Summing up forces along x equal to 0, we have minus 4p because this is going to the left. And then plus p and then minus 2p plus the internal force in our member, which is the reactive internal force, which will be applied to maintain equilibrium at this section. So we actually have this one. And then again, we will just assume that it's in tension. However, we know that it's actually in compression because at the left part of the section, our result was negative. And so it means that the direction of this force is actually going here, not here. But then again, uh, this is just our initial assumption and then since we considered the signs, it won't matter. And so again, at the right part of the section, this is going to the left. And so this is actually minus P steel. And then this is equal to zero. And so if you'll we'll move this one to the right, that will be positive. So we have P steel is equal to this expression. Now minus 4P plus P, that will give us minus 3P. And then minus 2P, that will give us negative 5P. And so this is minus 5p, which is just the same as this one. And so this is how you can verify that the force you used is correct. And so take note of this one. And so let's reconnect our member. And then we will now consider the aluminum rod, which is the rod at the middle. And so let's make a cut here, and then we'll separate the two sections. And so we have this one. And then again, the internal forces in our aluminum rod will be revealed. So we have a force right here and also here. And then they will just be equal in magnitude. And so considering the left part of the section, we have summation of forces along x equal to 0. That will be plus 5p and then minus 4p and then plus the actual force in the aluminum rod. That should be equal to 0. And so moving these to the right, we have PAL is equal to minus 5p and then plus 4p because we will change the sign. So this is plus 4p, we have minus p or negative 1p. And so this will be the force that we'll consider. And then if we'll consider the right side of the section, we have summation of forces along x equal to 0. That will be minus PAL and then plus p and then minus 2p. That's equal to 0. So we have moving this one to the right, that will become positive. And then p minus 2p, that will give us minus p. And so negative p will be the force that we will use when we are considering the aluminum rod. And so let me just erase this one. We have the allowable stress in the aluminum rod is 80 MPa. So we have 80 Newton per mm squared. That's equal to force divided by the area. And then this is our force, which is P divided by the area, which is 400 mm squared. So this is 400 mm squared. And then this will cancel. And so our P will be 400 times 80. That will give us 32,000 Newtons. So this is 32,000 Newtons. And so write this down. And so now, let's reconnect our member again. So we have this one. And then let's try to make a final cut that will consider our bronze rod. And so let's make a cut here. And then let's separate the two sections. So we have this one. And then now, we will now reveal the internal force in our bronze rod. And so that will be here. This is the internal force. And so we can get the value of this one by summing up forces horizontal. And so summation of forces along x. We have 5P minus 4P plus P plus PBR. This should be equal to 0. And so let's just move all of these to the right. And so we have PBR is equal to minus 5P plus 4P and then minus P, which will give us minus 5 plus 4. That will be minus 1. And then minus 1 minus 1. That will be negative 2. And then we have our variable P. And then if we'll consider the right part of the section, then it will just be easy because we only have this internal force. And so we can just say that PBR is equal to negative 2P because this should go to the right in order to resist this force. However, in your figure, 
or in your solutions, just write all of the directions of the forces in tension if you are considering the internal forces. And then just look at the sign if it's compressive or tensile. Now, going back to our steel member and our aluminum member, all of the resulting forces were negative. And so that means that those stresses were actually compressive or the forces applied were compressive forces. That's the basic concept. And so let me just erase this one. We will now solve the force in our bronze member. So again, our stress is 90 MPa. So we have 90 Newton per mm squared. And then this is equal to force divided by the area. Now our area is 200 mm squared. So this is 200 mm squared. And then the force that we will use is 2P. And so this is 2P. And so solving P, we have 200 times 90 divided by 2. We can get 9000. And so this is 9000 newtons. I hope you agree with this one. And so now, let's try to write down our forces. So the force in our steel member is 10,000 newtons. This is the maximum allowable. And then for aluminum, we have 32,000 newtons. And then for bronze, we have 9,000 newtons. And so sir, what will be our conclusion? Again, in mechanics, we are interested in ensuring the safety of our structures. And so, although this says that we have to pick the maximum value, it doesn't mean that we'll pick the largest force. Because notice that if we'll apply this force, then all of our other members will fail. For example, if we'll apply a force of 32,000 newtons, then our steel rod will fail. Because again, our steel rod carries 5P. And so if we'll input this one, we have the stress in the steel member will be 5 times 32,000 divided by the area which is 500 mm squared. So this is 500. And so if we will calculate this one, we have 5 times 32,000 divided by 500. That will give us 320 MPa, which greatly exceeds the allowable stress in our steel rod, which is only 100 MPa. And so this is why when you have these questions, you should choose the lowest value of P because this is the maximum load that we can apply so that none of our members will fail. Again, we are considering safety. In simple terms, this is the force that we can apply so that our steel rod and our aluminum rod will not exceed their allowable stresses. And so this is what you have to remember. Now, what if you don't want to use cutting sections? You actually have another option, and that is to draw the actual force diagram. Now sir, what is the actual force diagram? The actual force diagram illustrates the variations in actual forces along the length of a structural member providing a visual representation of the internal forces acting within the element. Now, to simplify things and to be consistent with our sign convention wherein negative is compressive and tensile is positive, we will just take into account that when we see forces going to the right, we will move down. So right corresponds to down and then left corresponds to up. And so remember this one. Now the first step will be to project a line from each member or at the points where there are changes in the loading. So we will do this one. So we will project a line from here and then here, here as well as here. Now what did I mean earlier that we'll consider the point where there are changes in the loading. Now in some examples, some loads may be applied at the center or anywhere along the member. So let's say you have a force here that's 3P, then there will be a change in the loading. And so you will also project a line from that point. This is what I mean. However, in our example, since we don't have forces applied along the member, then we'll just remove this one. I'm just discussing this if ever you will encounter this soon. And so these are our projected lines. Now, once we have drawn our lines, we will first establish our zero line. And then it will be parallel to our member. So we have this one. This is zero. And then we'll draw our actual force diagram from left to right in order to be consistent with our sign convention because we can only apply this one if we'll move from left to right. Now, starting from the steel member, we'll move down 5 units because we have 5P which is acting to the right. So from here, again, we'll always start at 0 and then we'll end at 0 because our member is in equilibrium. So we will start from 0 and then again, we'll move down 5 units. So this is minus 5p. I hope you agree with this one. And then since there's no actual loading from here up to here, then we'll just actually draw a straight line. So from this point, we'll draw a straight line up to this point. However, since at this point we already have an applied load which is 4p going to the left, we'll move up 4 units. Because again, if we have a force acting to the left, 
will move up. And so let's move up by 4. Negative 5 plus 4, that will become negative 1. So this is minus 1p or simply minus p. And then from this point up to this point, there's no axial loading. And so we will draw another straight line. So we have a horizontal line from here up to here. Then at this point, we have a force P acting to the right. And so we'll move down one unit. So we have minus 1P and then minus another P. That will give us negative 2P. And since there's no other loading here, we will draw another horizontal line. And so we have this one. Now, at this point, we have 2P acting to the left. And so we'll move up. And so from here, we'll move up by two units. We will now end up at zero. And so this is how you can check if your diagram is correct. Because you should always end at zero since your body is in a state of balance. Now, if you can't make this zero, then that means that there's something wrong with your solution. So this is the concept that you have to remember. And so let's just shade these. And then these will be the forces that you will use in your members. So for the steel member, we will use minus 5p. And then for the aluminum member, we will use minus 1p. And then for the bronze member, we will use minus 2p. Again, we will consider these areas. And so notice that these values were just the same earlier. And then it's up to you what you will want to apply in your exams. Now I hope this video helped you.